Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello all, myself, Dr. Suja CM, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today, I am going to discuss about database normalization topic in database management system. What is normalization? Database normalization is a technique of organizing the data in the database. It is a systematic approach of decomposing table to eliminate data redundancy and undesirable properties like insertion, updation, and deletion anomalies. Normalization process is used for mainly two purposes. The first one is eliminating redundancy in data and the second purpose is ensuring data dependencies make sense. That means the data is logically stored. So let's see what are the problems without a normalization. So database without normalization, it become very difficult to handle an anomalies like insertion, updation and deletion. And also there will be a lot of redundancy will be present if the, if the database is not normalized. So let's see an example. So here is a student table. So this student table is a table without normalization. So you can see the uh, columns of the table are serial number, name, branch, HOD name, and telephone. So if we are adding the students to this table, you can see the last three columns are repeating. Branch, HOD name, and telephone are common to all the students. So now in this table, only three rows are there. Suppose in an entire university, we have thousands of students. So we are adding thousands of students to this database. These three last column data is common. Same data is being repeated for all the thousand entries. Like that is a redundancy, it is not an undesirable property. Let's see what are the insertion, updation and deletion anomalies. So in insertion anomaly, like I said, if you want to add more data, the same information need to be repeated many times. So that is the insertion anomaly. Now, uh, what is update anomaly? Suppose <coughs> the department telephone has changed. So now we want to update the telephone number. So in that case, you need to do the updation in all the rows. The same data need to be updated in entire uh, rows. So that is the updation anomaly. Now, deletion anomaly. Suppose this group of students have graduated. Now we are going to remove the data from the database. So along with that student, the branch HOD name telephone, which is still relevant, need to be deleted. So that is the deletion anomaly. So in order to avoid these problems, we are using the normalization process. So here is a pictorial representation of the normalization process. In normalization, we are dividing the table into small tables. So here, the student table has been divided into two small tables called new student table with columns, serial number, name, and branch, and new branch table with columns, branch, HOD name, and telephone. So here you can see, in the student table, you can have how many ever students are there, That's, that many rows can be there. But in branch table, we just need a single row to represent the branch information. So here, we can avoid the, all the anomalies that we have discussed uh, previously. First of all, the redundancy is reduced to a much more uh, scale. And the in insertion is easy, even if the new data need to be up inserted to a branch table, it is very easy. Then updation. If you want to update the telephone number, we just need to do the updation in a single row. Uh, deletion anomaly also. Even if we deleted the uh, student detail, the branch detail will remain there. Uh, this is how normalization process helps to avoid redundancy and updation, deletion, and insertion anomalies. So let's see va various types of normalization. So there are many types. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss only the three types of normalization. The first one is a first normal form, second one is a second normal form, and third one is a third normal form. So let's move on to the first normal form. As per the first normal form, no two rows of the data must contain repeating group of information. That means each set of column must have a unique value and such that multiple columns cannot be used to fetch the same row. 
each table should be organized into rows and each row should have a primary key that is distinguishes uh, the row uniquely. So these are the rule for first normal form. So let's see a table which violates the first normal form. Here you can see a student table. In the first row, in the subject column, you have a multiple entry. So for the LX, who is having an age of 17, the subject is computer science as well as max. So two subjects are being entered for the subject column. So it violates the first normal form rule. So we have to normalize this according to the first normal form rule. So here we have normalized the table to avoid the data redundancy. So here you can see the, for the uh, student named Alex, we have created two rows. The first one with subject computer science and the second row with subject max. So now it satisfies all the rules for the first normal form and it is a table in first normal form. Now moving on to second normal form. So as per second normal form, the table must be in first normal form along with there should not be any partial dependency on primary key. So here suppose a case we have a concatenated primary key that is two columns together uh, makes a primary key. In that case all the non-prime attributes should depend upon the entire primary key not on a partial uh, portion of the primary key. So that is the second normal form rule. So here is a table which violates the second normal form. Let us see. So here the uh, primary key is a combination of student name and age and the non-prime attribute is subject. So in order to determine the subject, we do not need the age of the student, right? Just from the student name, we can determine which all subjects the student has taken. So here the subject column depends on only a section or a portion of the primary key. So that violates the second normal form. So according to the second normal form, we have to split the table into two table as given. So here we have split the table into two. The first table contain the column student name and age and the second column student name and subject. So now the table is in second normal form. Moving on to third normal form. As per third normal form, the table should be in second normal form and there should not be any transitive functional dependency. That means none of the non-prime attributes should depend each other. So here look at the table heading. Here the primary key is a student ID. So the columns are student ID, student name, date of birth, street, city, state and zip. So in order to determine the zip code, we do not need the primary key student ID, right? So from the city name itself, we can determine the zip code. So that is a transitive functional dependency. So th this table violates the third normal form. So we need to split the table into multiple tables. So let us see. So we have split the table into two tables. First one contain the column student ID, student name, date of birth and zip code. And the second table contain the columns zip, street, city and state. So these tables are in third normal form. So these are the normal forms we have learned today. So there are some other normal forms also. It will be covered in the next lecture. Thank you.